It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Minnesota Vikings and the Philadelphia Eagles coming up next. Temps a little hot today at Lincoln Financial Field, but keep in mind it is technically still summer as we get you ready for some football in Philly. Today we've got an intriguing NFC matchup lined up here as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Philadelphia Eagles. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Well, what a season it was for these Eagles and these Philly fans last year. An 8 no start. 14-3 final record, two blowout wins in the NFC playoffs before coming up a bit short in Super Bowl 57. And a good thing for Philadelphia is they try and get back to the Super Bowl. Many of the key pieces they had last year are back. Remember, this is the number three offense in the league, number two defense, and they threw in a heck of an NFL draft. They expect to contend one more time. Meanwhile, for the Vikings, their go-to man, the NFL's Offensive Player of the Year last season, and Charles, of course, that's Justin Jefferson. And can you dance like Justin Jefferson? Because I certainly cannot. But defenses, they see him dance all the way through them and find his way into the end zone. I don't care how you plan, he is difficult to stop. Here's the kicker, Jake Elliott, ready to get this one started. And off we go from Lincoln Financial Field. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. So here are the Vikings set to go to work, and they're led by the leading passer in the NFC a season ago. Now in his 12th year, sixth as a Viking, Kirk Cousins. Minnesota's new coaching staff really leaned on Cousins for leadership and production. And the longtime vet was up to the pressure. 29 touchdowns, 4,500 yards, and a 13-win season, his best as a starter. Captain Kirk, he's quietly been one of the league's most productive passers the last few seasons. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Cousins looking to put it up right away. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. Give him three there on the first play of the game, and it's second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. First carry now for Alexander Madison, and he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. From the gun, here's Cousins. And all of that, nearly an opening for the Lion team, but it does fall incomplete. Not the way he wanted to start this ball game as it brings up fourth down. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20-yard line. So here come the Eagles, the defending NFC champs, led out by a man who was the runner-up to Patrick Mahomes at MVP balloting a season ago. Of course, that's Jalen Hurts. And we already knew that Hurts was a good quarterback, but last year, he moved to elite status. Under his guidance, the Eagles returned to the Super Bowl and nearly won it. And he's also one of the league's most dangerous players, thrown for 38 touchdowns his last two seasons and run for another 23. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 21. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Quick slam here to Smith. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Give him 10 yards there and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. 
And Marcus Davenport, former Saint, in on the stop there. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Hurts. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Well, that's a defensive coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Here's Hurts to throw. And that is incomplete. And that's exactly what defenses talk about. You've got to find ways to get off the field when you can, especially on third down. And third down defense going to be vital in this game. Able to knock that one away and force a fourth down. And on fourth down, Aaron Sipos on to punt for Philadelphia. Brandon Powell deep for Minnesota. Well, on that punt, we've got a man shaken up. Hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Second and ten. To throw his cousins. Middle of the field to Jefferson. Five yards. Now it's third and five. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rally to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first down, and you tend to start them out when you do that. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test them early, but they proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. This is brought in at the 21. 42-yard punt, six on the return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. So back onto the field, here come the Eagles for their second drive. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. They'll start on the ground. It's Rashad Penny. And that to the 30. It'll be second down. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Ball on the 30 now. Here's a second and seven. Hurt sets up to throw it. A quick throw there is incomplete. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one. Force the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Brian Asamoah working his way in to pick up the sack. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter because once he gets outside, 
that's where he can really hurt you. Here's Aaron Sipos out now to punt on fourth down. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and it will be Vikings ball first and 10. Now Cousins. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game is we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. Here's second and ten. Cousins now. And incomplete on the deep ball. That was not a real confident throw right there, and he's just 2 of 7 to start the game. Now he's going to have to find a groove with a big third down coming up. Let's see if his confidence can increase. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Cousins. team's first sack of the game. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. And here's Ryan right now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it will be Eagles football first and 10. From the gun, it's Hurts. And that's out to the flat for Swift. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. And they run the option on second down. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Four yards there on the keeper, but still going to bring up a third down. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with a defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pull it and got good yardage himself. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. But first down, Hurts. He delivers another to Goddard, complete. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go out over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Excellent job on the keeper. 20 yards and a first down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. 
But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. Penny, a first down carry. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your O-line to set the tone of dominance and physicality, and pound the rock. Two yards to go, second down. Throwing his hurts. This time for Smith, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Harrison Smith. And a great return as he gets this all the way down close to the 30-yard line. Charles, not only is that an interception, it's one when you were really knocking on the door for a touchdown inside the red zone. You're actually thinking points. No matter what, at worst, you're thinking kicking a field goal and getting three. We might look back on this in the second half and say, you remember when they didn't get points on that drive? This could cost them. The Vikings head out to take over once again. They'll have very good starting field position here after the turnover as they search for the first points of the ball game. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. In motion right is Osborne. Now they show Jet Sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Osborne motions left. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. And that is well read there defensively. He was looking to use his speed to get the edge, but they said no way. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. On third down, Cousins. And I don't think he got there, no. He's short by maybe a foot, maybe. Call it fourth and inches. I thought maybe when he caught, he'd have a good chance of getting that first down, but that's a nice job of holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. Fourth down, field goal try coming, so Cousins is off, and on comes Greg Joseph from Minnesota. On the left hash mark, this a 38-yard attempt. Joseph's got it, and the Vikings have a 3-0 lead. So the interception set him up with terrific field position, but three points, the end result. Yeah, we can make this one pretty simple, partner. You always want to end drives with points, but that's one that you're going to look back on and probably say we should have done better there. Joseph now to kick this one away. On oh, the return, Boston Scott. And he returns this to the 22. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. A big mistake last time they were on the field, tossing that interception inside the red zone and really taking away what had been a pretty successful drive up to that point. Yeah, and I don't think there's any question about it. As they head out on the field for this drive, that whole offensive unit is just thinking redemption. You know, they moved it really well, didn't pay it off. This time, they want to make sure that ball ends up in the end zone, and they're the ones possessing it. Now left side on the swing pass, and he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it's second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. 
Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. That is caught. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Hurts finding Smith for the Philly first. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. On first and ten, it's Hurts, forced out to his left. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Well, it looked like a quick hitter, a three-step drop. But when it's not there, what do you do? He elects to try and escape through the mass of bodies up the middle, and he does so and picks up positive yardage. Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's second down and a yard. Play action. Here's Hurts. That is caught. It's the tight end gather. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 24-yard line. A good pickup there. 26 yards. Second and short. That's a rundown. So it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it. And they do so and pick up a first down. Off the play fake, here's Hurts. Out route pass complete to Goddard. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that will bring up second down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. They go play action with Hurts. He'll get this out wide to Penny, and he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Three-nothing after one on EA Sports. Now second quarter action from Philadelphia, and it's the Eagles in possession. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Inside handoff, Penny. The nice footwork gets him just inside the ten to the nine, but no further. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Second down, here's Jalen Hurts. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. So Hertz is off, and on comes Jake Elliott for the Eagle field goal. This is a 26-yard attempt. The kick by Elliott is good, and that will tie us at 3-3. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made him kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. 
And this taken in at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Now Cousins. And his throw is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Now a second and ten. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Into the hands of the rookie, Jordan Addison. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A first catch for the rookie, Addison. Good for a first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. First down, here's Cousins. incomplete here. I would say it would probably be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series, before you get out there, hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Again, it's Cousins. A throw out wide going to be incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he let him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. And this offense on third down today, not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and 10 to throw Cousins. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't come in. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. And here's Ryan right now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And they will take over first and 10. and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 26. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right, they did something to disrupt that timing. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Hurts. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes in bounds. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Here's Hurts to throw. going to be incomplete the contact there enough to jar that ball free and it brings up fourth down oh i thought he had that one and that was nearly a big third down conversion to give this drive some life instead they're on the spot and help separate the receiver from the ball aaron sipos on to punt as he'll get this one away now he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away here's powell on the return so a good punt there, but a nice return of 11 yards. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. 
The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced a punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and 10 at their 38. Cousins to throw it. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Everything looked right on that play except the conclusion. He dropped it, an in route going into a little bit of traffic. Maybe in the back of his mind, he was wondering where the hit was going to come from. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Now Cousins. And this will be caught at the 30. And he's brought down after a very nice game. It's a gain of 34. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So now then, the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Play fake, Cousins. Throw out wide is incomplete. And that's the knowledge of game for being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. They'll go Madison up the middle, and he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They need to make up some ground, and they did. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Cousins from the gun on third. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds incomplete. That was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. Fourth down, field goal try coming. So Cousins is off and on comes Greg Joseph from Minnesota. The kick by Joseph is good. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals. It's 6-3. to three. So we're trading first half field goals. No breakthrough on the touchdown front. We've got a 6-3 game. Yeah, and I know so many people look at a game through offensive eyes, right? They want to see how the game's played that way. You know how I'm going to view it, right? The defenses, to me, have responded well in this game. Like what I'm seeing from them, both of them hoping to keep it to field goals and not give up big touchdowns. So all field goals so far, 6-3 our score as the kick is away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 24. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Dean Lowry able to get him for a loss of about three. But that had to feel good for Dean Lowry, who made the move from Green Bay to Minnesota as a free agent in the offseason. Hopes that he's going to have his best year as a pass rusher yet. So following the sack, they'll try to change their fortune here on second and 13. Hurt sets up to throw it. And this is caught. It's Brown. Forward. And he will work his way out of bounds here at the 25-yard line. A big play there for Philly. 54 yards. Boy, of all the guys in the field to lose track of, 
How do you lose track of him? I think even he was surprised at all the space he had. You just hoping your quarterback sees you in that spot. Fortunately, he did, and it leads to a gigantic play. So that changes things in a big way. Now from all the way down inside the 30, here's first and 10. Now it's Penny running right. No, oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle him. And a really good show of force there as he gets through for four tough yards. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. On second down, here's Penny. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. So that time they get the tight end on the hold. Normally he's a pretty good run blocker, but this time he just didn't get his arms extended and let go quickly enough. The flag came out as a result. After the penalty, it's Penny. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. This Minnesota D up to the task on the third down pass play. Yeah, offenses always try to be smart about when they're trying to dial up a screen to the running back because they understand you can only go to the well so many times in a game without the defense starting to anticipate the call. The kick by Elliott is good, and that will tie things up at 6-6. Six -six. These kickers now it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. So back even at six apiece as the kick's away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And now out comes Minnesota. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. On first and ten, Cousins. This goes out wide for Madison. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. Second and six, just inside the 30. Here's Madison running left. Yeah, he'll fight for a couple as the tackle is made at about the 32. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. This offense so far on third down, they're struggling. 0 for 6 thus far. Here it's third and three. Here's Cousins. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. I don't care how many times we say it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why. There he goes, left side. A big 
change in field position there. That's 40 yards on the catch and run. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Cousins now. Throw left side, taken in by Jefferson. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 11 more on that one and another first down. Boy, everything clicking on this drive. He's four for four now, and that throw may be the best of the bunch. This offense is really humming, and they pick up another first down. Here's Madison running on first down. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Second down, ball on the three. First down marker at the one-yard line. Another carry now for Madison. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw it for a loss. On third down, Cousins. Uh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. And based on my math, They've only converted one time thus far in this game, so you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. Joseph's got it, but now there is a penalty marker on the field, so let's see what this is about. Roughing the kicker, defense. And they'll accept that penalty. First down. A kicker fest so far, all points via field goals. They're hoping to change that right here. They go play action. Cousins. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Not the first and goal play they drew up. Multiple defenders in to bring him down to the ground. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, it took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. They'll try again on second and goal after going backwards to the 12. Throwing, Cousins, and he's got his man in stride, complete, touchdown! Kirk Cousins on the connection to Justin Jefferson, and the Vikings have moved out in front. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals. Before this one, they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. Joseph connects on the extra point, and they will take a seven-point lead. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Boston Scott on the return from his end zone. Oh, some strong running. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. 
Philadelphia getting set to take the field. A touchdown would tie it. They trail 13-6 as they come up with a first and 10. Now a man picked up on draft night this year, DeAndre Swift. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. The throw over the middle, taken in. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. Being chased out left. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Give him a little extra credit there. His head was cool as the play broke down. Didn't force a throw. And in the end, got to show off his athleticism with a nice gain to bring up a new set of downs. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield to the 40 now for first and 10. Throwing his hurts. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. And their backs up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Now back to throw. This ball tipped and it's gonna be incomplete. Fortunate maybe to get that back. It's third down. What would look like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just gotta come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. From the gun, it's Hurts. And that is incomplete. This Minnesota D up to the task on the third down pass play. I think it's safe to say that he's made some questionable decisions out there so far. Forced some throws into tight coverage. He's already been picked off in this game. Fourth down now, but he was fortunate on that one not to have another turnover on his ledger. And this is good from 57 yards out. That was bombs away right there. And that'll bring him back within four. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. Taking it at about the one. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Justin Jefferson and the rest of this offense, they've got their helmets back on and they're ready for this next series. Previous series, definitely a focal point. Three catches, the touchdown grab. As a DB, your former DB, is there a number of catches on a drive you're like, oh, he got the best of us? I'm not sure there's a number, but there's a great feel. And what he did on the last drive, yeah. Especially with a touchdown. <laughs> yes. You're never way, happy. You're exactly right. The way he capped it off. So you feel that at the sideline, and now you're looking at your buddies and saying, okay, what are we going to do to take things away from him? Because I'm not sure the other guys can make those sort of plays. So let's make sure that we don't let him get going again. Right up to that point, I was about to say he's had a pretty good half catching the football, but let's just be honest about it. 
He should have caught that one. And he knows that. That was one right in his bread basket and one he normally catches. Throwing again, Cousins on second and ten. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. As expected, he's gone to him several times in this game, but that's the first time one has slipped from his grasp. I bet he goes back to him, though. He's an excellent player. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Now a give to Madison. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. The Vikings going to signal for their first of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a tick under a minute to go before half. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Cousins. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. Call it a gain of a yard, and that's going to bring up second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Now second and nine. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And that one will fall incomplete. Clock here now, just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Throwing his cousins. Pressure comes, and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with 23 seconds to go till halftime. And here's Ryan right now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. And the Eagles going to get one final possession in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. Now second and three. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. Dumps that off to Penny, is running back. Now a signal and a timeout call. As it comes with nine seconds to go in this first half of play. This now a third and four. He'll look to throw. A throw right side here going to be incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. They'll throw now on the final play. He's going to look deep for Watkins. And this is caught inside the five. And he's going to get this down inside the five before he's out of bounds. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. 
Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment, but welcome everyone to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. We were certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's gonna be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. All right, coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. It's the Eagles ready to see the football first, and they trail here as we resume action in this third quarter. This fielded right at the goal line. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. The Eagles ready to go on offense to begin quarter number three. Well, Charles, we saw a pretty entertaining first half, close ball game. Remember there toward the end of the second quarter, the opposition scored to take the lead. Now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. Gauntlet's been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. And they'll run the option to start the drive. Oh, what a move. They are able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Six yards there on the keeper. It's second down. Oh, man, that wasn't far from breaking in a big way into the secondary. Read option, quarterback kept it. And while he didn't get a first down, he did get a nice chunk of yardage. Only a nice tackle prevented it from maybe going all the way. Hurts throw complete here to his receiver, Brown. And A.J. going to pick up an Eagles first down as he'll get this up to the 39. But when we see the ball tipped in the air, sometimes we get a little roll change, don't we? Because when it's in the air, sometimes the defensive back becomes the receiver. And in this case, the receiver looked like a defensive back, but ended up a receiver. He caught it as a receiver. <laughs> hey, it worked out. Worked out really well for them. But I'm telling you, the defensive guys. Frustrating. Oh, frustrating. They're going to catch it in film. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning it in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Hurts. And he's going to lose a yard or two. Take him down behind the line. Multiple players getting home for the one-yard sack. That time, finally, a measure of revenge as they get him down behind the line. It almost felt like relief, didn't it? Because with the success he's had throughout this game, you'd almost expect him to get free and pick up 10 to 15 every time he takes off. Not in that case. That has to feel good for the defense. Work in the middle of the field. He's got a man complete. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 34-yard line. Excellent play there on third down. Give him 25 yards. Now what we're seeing, this is much better from this offense because so far in this game, no touchdown to this point. And what's usually a direct correlation? Very few explosive plays. That's been their issue. Not able to make that big shot downfield or break one off, but a nice game there for a first down. And they run the option here on first and 10. It'll be a pickup of five on the keeper and second down. Now that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained. And in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. Hurd's going to keep it again. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. He'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. Well, he's had success running the football in this one, and that's undeniable, but that time the defense was on to it. And, partner, I think the more you see a play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker, 
and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up a little bit and show maybe some different formations and looks. Hurts. He finds his tight end, Goddard. That's complete. And they will rally and stop him short of the first down. They get him to the ground at the 26. I thought they might take a shot down the field, but instead they ran a little drag route there. I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender. But a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. Going with their tight end on third. And he is going to have an Eagles first down as he's brought to the ground after a game of seven, five more than he needed on fourth and two. Remember, that was fourth and a full two yards. There's a big difference between that and fourth and maybe six inches or a yard. Yeah, you're exactly right, because when it's that six inches, you just fall forward and you pick it up, right? You just go quarterback sneak. But having to move bodies, that means you actually have to execute because they know what you're going to do. How are you going to make the right play call and get everyone into the right spot and win at the line of scrimmage? That's what they did there. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. Penny up the middle. And a good run as he manages seven yards down to the 17. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Here's a second and eight. Now Hurts on the option right. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. They wind up losing a couple there, so they go behind the original line of scrimmage. And now third and 11 coming up. Backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. Here's Hurts to throw. this to the 14 as he'll come up well short of the first down five yards that time out of the scramble but now they're looking at a fourth down situation he certainly had plenty of success running the ball and right now i'm getting the sense that he's looking to take off and run every time he steps back to throw it but they did a nice job there collapsing on him and holding him to a short game so hertz is off and on comes jake elliott for the eagle field goal from the right hash, this a 31-yard attempt. The kick by Elliott is good, and that'll bring him back within a point. So they were facing the deficit coming out of the locker room at intermission, and at least they're able to get the field goal to cut into that deficit. Yeah, now your offense feels pretty good about itself, right? A little bit more up to speed coming out of the break. You turn to your defense now and say, hey, we got three there. We're chipping into the lead. Can you help us out? Hold them. Let's get the ball back for us. to the field goal. Here's Elliott to kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. And he'll return this one all the way onto the other side of the field. Partner, when I was in college, we used to have these things called game maxims that we did before every game. One of them said, press the kicking game, for here's where the breaks are made, is the area of hidden yardage. How about that return? Flipping the field, taking it past the 50, and getting things set up to start the series. Here's a give to Madison running right. Down to about the 45. Well, we all know the guy carrying the ball is going to get the credit, both in the stat line and probably in the newspaper. But guess what? Those guys creating holes, they couldn't feel better about themselves right now. Offensive line, tight end, probably even the wide receivers are involved. They're moving the ball well. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's second and six. On the toss, Madison. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. 
44 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Off the play fake, Cousins. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. Now a throw here, hold in. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Here comes third and about a foot. From the gun, here's Cousins. I uh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. His back has been dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. Kevin O'Connell has a play call ready. His guys going for it on fourth. They're going for it. Here's Madison. And he is going to pick up the Vikings first down. So quite a call there. They go on fourth and inches and wind up getting five yards. They only needed about four or five inches there. Relied on the big guys up front and got it done. Yeah, this is the time to just go ahead and hit it straight ahead. No juking, right? No movement in the backfield. Take the ball and go. As I heard a coach tell a player a long time ago, save your dancing for the club, son. Just get up into that line of scrimmage. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. He was trying to find Justin Jefferson there. That'll bring up second down. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. The pickup goes for 13 and sets him up first and goal. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Back to the ground on first down. Here's Madison. It'll be a gain of five there as they move closer. It's second and goal. Defensively, they must have been expecting a pass. They were in the dime look out there. I think maybe they were deciding to go with speed on the field rather than bulk. I'm with you. A little bit surprising. They wanted people getting to the ball as fast as possible. The lighter shift your defensive backs allow you that opportunity. Trying the power game with Ham. And he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. And now third and goal coming up, the loss on second down. That just means this crowd's going to get even louder, and they'll get a little bit of extra help from the defenders as they exhort them to join them in the effort. Madison, boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. Fourth down now after a loss of two. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. Fourth down, field goal try coming. So Cousins is off and on comes Greg Joseph from Minnesota. This will be just a 21 yard attempt. The kick by Joseph is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So three field goals that he's hit. Now this last one helps him stretch out the lead. He's been solid, hasn't he? And he lives up to the adage that every offensive coach has ever said to us. We want to end every possession with a kick, right? For them, it's either extra point, field goal, or at worst, a punt. In this case, it's been threes. Joseph now to kick this one away. 
Scott on the return out of the end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. The Eagles offense now gets set to head back onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Well, here's a good way to kick off a drive. Complete over the middle. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. Play action, here's Hertz. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. Burt sets up to throw it. This short throw caught by Goddard. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. It's not cool about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. They need two. Here's third down. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have an Eagles first down. And he's going to have it by plenty. Able to get eight yards there on third and two. So it's a quarter that saw these two teams trade field goals here as we've reached the end of three quarters of play. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. a missed opportunity after the incomplete pass here now is second and ten again he'll drop to throw out to the left there and complete to the tight end goddard and this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the vikings 26 and here we are in the fourth quarter partner and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown and you and i both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too. On first and 10, it's Hurts. Now a quick throw there, but it's gonna be incomplete. So it looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone, but this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Back to throw again. And this one is incomplete. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying... No more. We're speaking a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Uh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. So a big, big kick coming now for Jake Elliott from the left hash mark. This a 43-yard attempt. The kick by Elliott is good, and that'll bring him back within a point. So with the
that field goal. This one's now back within a field goal. Maybe not the ultimate result they wanted, but gets them that much closer. This game is unfolding like a really good book, isn't it? Because I feel like there's a few more plot twists yet to be revealed before this one is over. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. I guess the good news as they start this drive is that they, they still do have the lead, Charles. If their defense hadn't been able to hold them to a field goal on the other side, they'd be down. But now it's about preserving that very small lead. It is preserving and maybe stretching it out a little bit because... If you're a starter on that side of the ball, I certainly hope you didn't loosen up your shoulder pads or start to cut the tape off, because if you did, you did it way too soon. They've got to go back out there with renewed vigor, for lack of a better term, and also a good plan. They need points, and they need them now. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it's second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. On second down, this is Madison. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. 72 yards here for Madison. He's got a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, He's the guy they've turned to, and it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. They run on first down as they're able to get this forward for about four. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive game. Just keep that clock ticking. From the 35, here's second and six. To throw is Cousins. This is caught by Addison. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagles 37. That one nearly 30 yards, 29 officially. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 37-yard line. They'll go Madison up the middle. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard, stop short of the 35. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. They work now on second and nine. Now Cousins, over the middle and complete to Addison. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball in the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there, perfectly executed crossing route. On third and one, here's Cousins. I uh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. So he looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time ends up leading him just a bit too much. And here's a big one now. Trying to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll try and run for it. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. It's always been funny to me, Brandon, when coaches always talk about on hot days like the one we have here, well, it's hot for both teams. But when one team has the advantage, when one team is running the ball really well and closing things out, it's hotter for the defensive side, and they sag a lot quicker. Yeah, they say the dog days of August, the heat we're seeing here today, dog days of September, and the advantage right now on the offensive side. 
Josh Sweat coming in strong and dropping him behind the line of scrimmage. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run until they absolutely stop you, and others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool them a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool them on that play. Cousins now on second down. Out to the left there and complete to the tight end, Hawkinson. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. 23 yards, the final tally. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Throwing his Cousins. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. That's a pretty play there. Got in at the last second, helped force the ball free, and kept them out of the end zone. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. Now Cousins. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. K.J. Osborne from three yards out. And the Vikings will add to their fourth quarter lead. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. Joseph on for the extra point. And with that, the lead is up to eight. So that drive, 12 plays in length, and it's polished off by a Viking score. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Scott on the return out of the end zone. Oh, a dangerous return man showing it here. Boston Scott, he's inside the 20. And he'll bring it back all the way. Touchdown, Eagles. And any time you're in the fourth quarter, down two now. Do you try to tie it? I think that more and more quarterbacks want to go for it, no matter what time and what the score is. In this situation, I think they'll insist on it. All right, now a big two-point conversion attempt still to come. Hertz will throw. And he's got it. The conversion good, and we are tied in the fourth. Still time to work with on the clock, but they wanted the tie now, and they got it. And I love their aggressiveness. Go ahead and get it done. Get the game tied. Now your team has the momentum, and you're staring across the field saying, let's see if you can match us. setting up for a great finish all tied in the fourth as the kicks away and we will not see an attempt to match that return touchdown as this will be a touchback and bring it out to the 25 now the minnesota offense set to take over again and we essentially have a brand new ball game after that last field goal has tied us all up we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll start on the ground with Madison. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. 
Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Second down, Gaskin. And the defense closes quickly there, and he'll get maybe a yard to the 33. Third and two. to throw Cousins that is incomplete you know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away but the bottom line is that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught and here's Ryan right now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20-yard line. Eagles set and ready for their next offensive drive. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity all tied in the fourth quarter. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 21. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit when he decided not to throw it on first down. But give them credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. But it's only second and short. So that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. They'll run the jet sweep with Brown. Oh, uh, this one may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. He winds up giving a yard back there, and now it's third and two. Well, as a wide out, when you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw in that play with a loss. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. The Eagles send out their punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. No return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. A 40-yard punt, no return, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 27. They'll begin things here with Gaskin. And that to the 30, it'll be second down. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. Now a second down throw for Cousins. Open man, he's got him, the tight end, Hawkinson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. I like what I'm seeing from them here. Tie game in the fourth quarter. They understand the situation. They don't need to be in any rush. Go ahead and huddle up and run your offense. That last completion put them in a nice position to take the lead in this game. 
Running on first down with Gaskin. And some nifty running here as he'll take this across midfield and down to the 47. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 47. On first down, back to Gaskin. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. Second and six coming up. Play fake. Cousins. Complete to Addison on the out route. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagles' 32-yard line. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got it first and 10 as they search for a go-ahead score. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at him. And he's going to take this one down to the 25. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as it'll come with an even 90 seconds remaining on the clock. Well, you don't have to beg the Philly faithful to make noise on their feet for third down. Here's Gaskin. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts as they'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Another run with Gaskin. And he's taken down, and that'll get him a little bit closer. But every yard at this point will help your field goal kicker out. Now second and four. Gaskin will try it up the middle. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Miles Gaskin, a 15-yard touchdown run. And the Vikings have broken our tie and have taken a fourth-quarter lead. And that score deserves our respect, deserves our excitement. But I'm looking at the clock, and I'm thinking, there's a long way to go in this one. Ideally, they would have liked to milk a little bit more time off now. On the other sideline, you start to get the crew together and say, this is what we practiced the two-minute drill for, right? Yeah, you hope you've been in that situation before, and if you haven't, you just have the confidence. Hey, let's go down there and get this thing done. But boy, that's a big score right there to give them the advantage. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Scott on the return, out of the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. Hurts and the Eagles now, down by seven. A minute 16 remaining. Needing to go pretty much the length of the football field as they have it first and 10. Back 
to throw. Pass complete, Goddard. They drive some people crazy to see those short throws underneath. They've got to find a way to gash the defense downfield. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three at the 24-yard line. Here's second down and three. He'll look to throw. Oh, and that's going to sabotage their comeback plans. It is intercepted. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. An excellent play there, CD, on the pick six. And I, I think they, were they a nickel? Did they have an extra DB out there? Yeah, Brandon, I think they were in standard nickel, not the uh, Buffalo, as teams like to call it, meaning three safeties for big nickel. They just wanted to take away the quarterback's throwing lanes, and that's exactly what they did, and came through with a big-time pick six. Joseph now to have the PAT. And the lead is up to 14. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Scott on the return out of the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Holding, receiving team. They were trying to create some space to run. They created the penalty. And you work on it so much. You work on it so hard but it's tough to simulate game speed in practice, and that often runs you into a penalty. They'll come up first and 10 here. They'll throw on first down with Hertz. And his throw's gonna be incomplete. And now defensively in the two minute drill, the big key to me, Make sure you understand your assignments, and anytime you get a chance to tackle someone in bounds, get them on the ground. They'll come up now on second down. Second down, here's Hertz. Complete to Zacchaeus, and he is out of bounds with the first down as the clock ticks inside of 30 seconds. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores, want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. But first down, Hurts. His throw incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it, and oftentimes, knock it away. Another try, second and 10 now. Second down, here's Jalen Hurts. This is Smith to the ground. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. One final shot. They'll look to throw. Zacchaeus here hauling it in. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Well, this was a very close ball game at halftime, Charles, but in the second half, that offense kind of kicked things into another gear, and they were able to pull away for the victory. And Brandon, I think they're the type of team that just looked in the mirror and said, hey, ton of pressure on, but we're the type of team that can flat out handle it. They stood up, stood up with confidence, and made it happen for a victory.